Okay, so this is like the, uh, I guess the first video in the um, 1712 dual bander series. Um, I'm gonna build a, a transceiver for 17 meters and 12 meters in anticipation of the cycle 25 peak that is coming. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna build you know, as, as is my custom, is the uh, is the oscillator that's at the heart of the transceiver. So I've decided to go with an analog VFO, of course, and I'm trying to build a better VFO than I've built in the past. I've built a lot of kind of halfway decent, kind of wonky, halfway kind of VFOs, but the recent series by Mike WU2D on YouTube on how to build VFOs really kind of inspired me to do a better job on my VFOs. So that's what I'm going to try to do uh, now. Um, and I've started with a piece of wood. The wood, the piece of wood, it will be the kind of the basis of the chassis. It's about the same size, a little bit smaller <clears throat> than my uh, 2040 transceiver so that the this rig will eventually just sit right up on top of it and I'll have 20, 40 on the bottom, and 17 and 12 on the top. So the first thing I really had to do was to, to build the, uh, the VFO. And I followed some of the principles, most of the principles of, uh, that, that Mike WU2D outlined. I also referred to solid state design for the radio amateur and to W1FB, Doug Dumas design notebook. He has a good Colpitz uh, VFO circuit there. And so I, I haven't built the buffer or the amplifier yet. I've just built the, the VFO stage. And I'll show you guys what I did to try to make this thing as, as stable as possible. All right. So, let me see. Hold on. Get this oriented here. There it is. Obviously, looking down from the top. All right. So it's, it's on the board. I'm using the main cap that I'm using is something that I picked up off of eBay at the recommendation of Pete Giuliano. He spotted it. And Pete was mostly focused on this anti-backslash mechanism that we have on the front. It turns out that this is the main tuning capacitor from a Helicrafter's HT37 transmitter, a rig near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's got uh, I think uh, in, inside the main cap tunes from about 20 to about 35 picofarads. And one of the interesting features is it has this Helicrafter um, temperature compensation cap here. Now this is a big, this is kind of an air variable cap here, differential split stator cap with two different tubular caps across it. So this allows you to do some, some temperature compensation. Um, now, um, one, one thing that I did different here from, from other, um, VFOs that I've built, uh, well, I, I've known that air core coils are very important, but this is like the biggest, most solid air core coil I've ever used. It's, I think it's what they call mini ducks. So I had this thing in the, um, in the junk box for a long time and I, I took, just took out a chunk of it and just super glued it down to the wood board. So that's the only kind of solid connection. It's pretty solid. It's right there. I used some heavy wire to make the connections to the circuitry. And then in the circuitry itself, I used only NP0 capacitors, and I used a lot of them in series. So you'll see these two capacitors, two, two sets of capacitors here. These, those are the 680 uh, picofarad uh, capacitors used for the feedback network. And um, instead of just putting one 680 picofarad NP0, I put a bunch of them together. And I, um, I really benefited in this one that I had these great capacitors that were sent to me by Dale, K9NN. He sent me these two big bags of, uh, of NP0 caps I think I have almost a lifetime supply here to um, to build uh, VFOs, and and that was really great. I had earlier been using these really little tiny NP0 caps that I got uh, on the internet. 
I mean, they're NP0, they're okay, but they're tiny. So I think you're better off using the bigger ones if you can get them. And so that's what I did. And I, I do think that the, it made a, a lot of stability improvements. I did bolt everything down pretty solidly. The board is screwed down to the to the, the, the PC board, single-sided PC board, so, uh, screwed down to the wooden board underneath it. Um, and then, like I said, the caps are very solidly, they're not floating around in there. They're very solidly in there. So here we see the, the feedback caps are about 680 picofarad. I had to put about 130 picofarads in parallel with the main tuning cap to get it in the tuning range. And I needed about 300, p 300 picofarads to go from the gate of the FET to the coil and cap main tuning arrangement. That's it. There's some source circuitry here. There's a dropping resistor for the, uh, um, for the drain. The, um, the, the, the transistor that I'm using there is a dual gate MOSFET. It's the equivalent of, of, of 40673. I think it's a, let's take it, an SKA 3030, something like that. And uh, I just tied the two gates together and used it as a JFET. It works, it works fine. And, um, and that's, that's really about it. I was really amazed when I, when I fired this thing up. I'm very much used to having a, a new VFO take a long time to settle down because I've had the soldering iron in there and it's jumping around as it cools off. And you put it on a frequency counter and it's all very disheartening. You see this thing jumping around. And then you convince yourself, oh, well, it's because I had the soldering iron in there. But with this thing, even though it was still hot, because I had recently been soldering these big capacitors in there. As soon as I put it on the HP 8640B uh, counter, signal generator and counter, man, it was really stable down at the lowest digit. It, the lowest digit it displays is the tens of hertz. And it's very stable. It doesn't jump around. It's, uh, and I, I don't have this thing enclosed. Um, I don't have it in a in a box or anything. It's just sitting here on the workbench, and there's air currents, and the you know the heat comes on, the heat goes off. But over a long period of time, this thing is really stable. It moves, I don't know, maybe 10 hertz over 24 hour period. It really calls makes me wonder whether I need to go to the trouble of putting it into a box. You know, Frank Harris K0 IYE and Mike. Um, WU2D recommended the use of a hermetically sealed box. Look, a die cast box. Look at that. I got one. And I don't know if I'm really going to have to use it. Or I might use it for another VFO project. Because this thing is so stable right now that I'm kind of inclined to just leave it the way it is and then use the board. You can see I've sort of mapped out the territory on the board for the rest of the circuitry and the 12 uh, 17 uh, project. Anyway, it's been it's been fun. I really have found that this construction of a stable VFO is one of the the more satisfying construction, more satisfying builds that I've been involved in. It really gets you to um, kind of the heart of the physics of radio. I mean, let's face it, the uh, the the oscillators that we use in our rigs are really the core, the heart of our rigs. And I think it's, it's, it's too bad that when we want to build a homebrew rig, we start out by saying, oh, well, the module, the VFO, is it's too hard to build in an analog way. So let's just throw in a digital chip, an SI5351, and have that thing create the RF that we eventually send out. I personally find it much more satisfying to struggle with coils and capacitors and temperature compensation things like that, than to struggle with, you know, lines of code going into an Arduino and an SI5351. But hey, to each his own, your mileage may vary. This is just the kind of construction that, that I like. So I'll keep you guys posted as I move through this project. I'm going to fool around with the VFO for a little while. I've got to build the, uh, the buffer and the amplifier stages before I move on to the rest of the circuitry. But I have been having fun with, uh, with the VFO design and build, and I, uh, I hope 
that's been it's been useful. Again, I think my main points here would be air core coils like this one, um, NP0 caps in parallel like these, solid construction. Oh yeah, and one one other thing, I'm I'm running this thing at very low voltage. It's running at five volts, and this this up here is a a zener diode voltage dropping network that I'll eventually use. I want to get I have a zener in there at about eight volts, but I want to get a lower one in there, run the whole thing at about five volts. And I'm looking at it; it's still really really stable. Um, I'll show you guys the counter here before we we sign off for the morning. Oh, there we go. There's the. Uh, you can see it's kind of wobbling there at between seven, six and seven tens of Hertz. It's right there at the border, but I could leave it there all day and it'll stay in the same spot. So anyway, there we go. I think it's a thing of beauty too. Kind of three dimensional. I like it. I like having a bit of a Halicrafters HT37 in there. I like the air core coil anyway. VFOs. There you go. They're not too hard to build.